Hello, thank you for joining us today here at Bay Path University. My name is Rashida Thornton and I am the Graduate Admissions, um, Admissions Assistant Director for the Graduate Program. Um, today we'll be meeting with Dr. Stevens. She will be talking about the Master's Program for Accounting and going over some helpful information to process in your time as far as going into the admissions process. When we start out, we are looking at why people come to Bay Path. What makes Bay Path such a wonderful place to come to? We were founded in 1897. We are a private practice institution. We also are a nonprofit. We have locations in Longmeadow, East Longmeadow, and online as far as our graduate and undergrad classes for students. We also have currently 3,300 students currently attending Bay Path University. We also have over 1,700, excuse me, 17,000 worldwide students as far as alumni when we're looking at our program. We are accredited university through New England Commissions of Higher Learning. What makes Bay Path such a wonderful place to come to? We constantly pride ourselves on having flexibility and accessibility when it comes to our students. Our students are always able to get into contact and reach out to staff and faculty as needed. Our, our staff, we're very supportive. Our faculty, they want to see you do successful things. We're engaged and we have a very diverse community with our students here. And we're always coming up with creative ways to teach and bring stuff to the learning platform on Canvas for our students. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Kara Stevens. This is your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rashida. And welcome. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to watch this webinar um, about the Masters of Science and Accounting program. So I am Kara Stevens. I've been at APATH going into my 12th year teaching here. My background is public accounting. So I'm CPA, which is a certified public accounting. I have worked in um, the profession and have worked with a range of clients from manufacturing clients, nonprofits, broker dealers, financial institutions, and let me just see, is this a little glitch in our system? There we go, okay. Um, and then I moved on from public accounting and have worked in the private sector and I got into teaching a bit. So I was working as an adjunct professor and really loved being able to explain accounting to students. So that really led me to pursuing my doctorate degree in finance and spending my career now teaching accounting. Um, my research interests are really focused on financial literacy and youth, so I'm very passionate about ways to improve financial literacy for our young people, especially in our Western Massachusetts community, and building them up to make good financial decisions, and um, you know, we know that that leads to a stronger um, economy. So that's a little bit about myself. Now, I really want to get into more about the MSA program. So how I've structured this webinar is first, I'm going to talk about the MSA program in general. So if you're watching this, you've probably done some research on MSA, you know, from other institutions, why you're even considering an MSA program in general. And then I'll get into what makes an MSA program at Bay Path unique. So, an MSA program is a great investment of your time and your money. We have great statistics that show that there is still a growth in the job market for accountants. So we show through the labor of um, the Bureau of Labor that there is growth for accountants going all the way through 2028. And this always, you know, we update these statistics yearly and it always extends so I expect next year that this is gonna go on even further with increased regulations, increased job and job security for accountants is there. Um, 
I don't want people to get concerned when they read articles about artificial intelligence or even data analytics. That is actually a positive for the accounting profession. It's an increased skill set that accountants can have um, and things that we're building into our MSA program um, to help accountants not take away from the profession itself. It's just really enhancing um, the way that accountants are doing the job, not replacing accountants. So, you know, I don't want there to be a misconception about that in, in the workforce. And you can do your own due diligence, go on to any job site, um, and you will see the job market is very, very strong for accountants. Um, the American Institute of CPAs, the AICPA, show that having an MSA is an automatic bump in salary from only having an undergrad. So they are showing that starting salaries are 10 to 20% more for those having a master's degree, really specifically in accounting, versus only having a bachelor's degree. So that is certainly a positive, and that's what we're talking about just with starting salaries, those entry level positions. Additionally, a lot of the public accounting firms, so if you're looking to go into public accounting, looking to pursue that CPA, they will not hire until you have that 150 degree. So um, the CPA requires 150 credits. Your undergraduate degree is 120 credits. And most MSA programs are 30 credits, bringing you to the 150 credit requirement for the CPA. So again, public accounting firms generally won't either hire without you already having the 150 credits or even when you're interviewing, they want you to have a plan for your 150 credits. They want to know how you plan to obtain these. Um, so your plan of pursuing a master's degree. And now what we're finding in the workplace, and this is really a change, I'd say really most prevalently over the past five years, I've seen this shift, is that jobs are in accounting in particular are really requiring master's degrees. In the past, we saw more the um, the job saying preferred now we're almost seeing this preference and we used to see a preference now especially in the upper level accounting positions we're seeing a requirement of a master's degree so maybe the entry level positions you're still seeing a preference toward an msa but in those higher degreed positions or those higher level positions they want the higher degrees so just to know that when you are moving up into the higher level positions they are looking for that higher level of degree. So we see a lot of people in our program who are already working in the profession and realizing that for them to move up to the next levels in their career, they really need to be pursuing the master's degree. We also have a lot of people who are new graduates and realize that they are already on their path to um, continuing their education. They're already, you know, in the mode of, you know, pursuing education. Why not just take the next steps in completing the master's degree? So those are some of the just in general of why pursuing an MSA. And then we get into the next slide of why BayPath? What makes BayPath different? Most every school have MSA programs. Um, it's not a unique program um, in, in that sense. MSA programs, if you do a Google search, you're going to find a lot of schools have MSA programs. It's a very traditional program. Um, so when we designed this program um, almost eight years ago, we really looked to see what can we do different. And as somebody who went through kind of a traditional path of doing my undergraduate in accounting and then pursuing a master's degree, I actually did an MSA degree because there, I'm sorry, an MBA degree, because there weren't a lot of flexible MSA programs at that time. Um, the MBA programs were around a little bit longer, so there was more flexibility with the MBA programs. I was already working in public accounting, so I needed more flexibility. Um, so when we designed this program, one of the biggest things, and I was the founder of this program, was to create a program that was really flexible for working professionals knowing that the majority of our students in this program are working full-time. They have busy schedules, whether personal, professional, um, all of the above. We needed to make this program something that would work for everybody. And I believe that we've done that. Um, and here are some of the ways that we've done that. 
This program is 30 credits. That's not really unique um, in and of itself, but we do allow for multiple start points. So we have five different start points in this program, which allows you to start the program when you want to. You can start um, in any of our sessions. So you're not bound to starting only in the fall or in the spring semester, or you know you don't have to start the program right in the summer months. That might not work for your schedule. You also have the option of completing the program in one or two years. There is even a more accelerated path, and we like to talk to students more individually if you're looking to even complete the program more accelerated than one year, but there are some options to even further accelerate the program, but the typical paths for students are one or two years. Um, this allows you the opportunity to get through the program, you know, relatively quickly, or, you know, just not to take your time, but know that you have demands and you need to be very successful in this program. So, you know, to allow you that flexibility. Um, we have opportunities to not take classes during what we call the traditional busy season for accountants. And this is actually, um, sometimes it runs through April. This year, it will be January, February, and March, um, depending on the calendar um, cutoff. But, this was important to me because when I was completing my MBA degree, I had to take classes during the busy season. And it was a very, very busy season for me. And what this meant was I had to leave my clients to get to classes. I wasn't doing it online. Um, there wasn't an online option at that time. And I felt like I was kind of failing in all regards. You know, it looked like I was leaving work early. I was rushing into class, you know, just on time, um, always feeling rushed. So giving this time off, um, knowing that a lot of our students are affected by the busy season, whether you're working in public or accounting or not, a lot of our students have um, are working in private accounting and have big December 31st year ends and are working with closing the books and you know getting the books ready for the auditors to come out or we have students who are actually working in the audit profession or the tax profession and for those who are not working in the profession yet it's a nice little break um, you can look at it as a break to recoup um, or it's a time to for those who may not have um, enough accounting even on their trend on their resume maybe to do a mini internship or a job shadow experience or something that we can capitalize on that time off to get some resume building experience um, so it's it's a great opportunity built into our program to use the time as it fits you best this program is totally online it was designed that way this is not to um, you know deal with what we had been dealing with over the past couple of years with the pandemic um, you know having to shift quickly online this program was developed online this program meets the pedagogy of online education our faculty are trained in how to teach online um, our classes are small by design online so you're not in a class online with 30 40 students our average class size is 12 to 15 students sometimes even a little bit smaller um, it gives you the opportunity to really get to know your faculty and the other students in the program who are working in the profession right in our region and it's a great networking opportunity to get to know these people who could be people who become part of your professional network um, the faculty in our program are working sometimes in the profession. Um, they have real world experience and we only hire people, of course, who care about your success in the program. You know, we want to see you succeed. I was in a meeting yesterday with Rashida and I was talking about the greatest like reward for me for this program is when a student contacts me that they landed you know, the job, they got the promotion, and also when a student who has graduated from the program reaches back out to hire somebody from the program because they got a promotion and realized you know, that we have great students in our program and they wanna hire from this program. You know, that is, to me, the success. And you know, it gives me great um, just, um, happiness that you know that we really um, 
are turning out great accountants into the profession. Um, and then I mentioned again, the student diversity coming from many different industries in accounting. And the majority of our students are really coming from you know, the Massachusetts, Connecticut region. Um, we do have students coming from really all over the country. Um, so again, the opportunity to network is, is really robust. We have a very supportive staff. Um, you may have already had the opportunity to meet with Rashida or myself and, um, you know, all the way from IT to the registrar's office and admissions, very responsive. I should have mentioned with our online, we are on ground. I know um, Rashida is right in our Longmeadow campus today. I am right down the street from our campus. I live um, two miles down the road, but I float between my home office and our on-campus office. I do teach on ground in our undergraduate accounting um, program as well. So if you are local and ever want to meet on campus, um, Rashida or myself, you know, could always meet. And when you are in the program, you know, coming on campus using our services in terms of our library or even our, um, our gym facilities or um, our cafeteria or meeting with myself or other faculty who are on campus is definitely um, a possibility. So some other reasons why the Bay Path MSA program is unique is that, and this is something that I, I really love about the program, is that further flexibility allows you to choose your concentration within the program. So this program is made up of 30 credits. So that's 10 courses, which again is a very traditional MSA program. Seven of those courses are a common core. So no matter which concentration you decide, seven of the courses are essentially a very traditional MSA program. So you're getting your traditional um, financial accounting, your research courses, your cost accounting, um, you're already getting some data analytics, and so on. But it is important for us that when you graduate from this program, you have something a little extra, right? Already having the MSA program, we talked about the reasons in general, why it's important, but here at Baypath, you're going to get something a little extra too. And we believe that's through these concentrations that you get to choose and decide. And right out of the gate, right out of the start with admissions, we want you to really be thinking about the area of accounting that you are planning to concentrate in. Maybe you're already working in the profession and you already know the area that you're going into. Maybe you don't. And this you know, could create a little bit of uncomfort but we want to have these conversations up front with you. You really can't go wrong with any of these concentrations. They all really work in the profession and in most industries that you plan to go into. But thinking about it up front really will lead to a better outcome at the end of the program in terms of the job that you want or the you know, next level in your career that you want to get to. So the concentrations that we have are these career focused concentrations in terms of industry within the accounting. So of course they're all accounting focused, but this takes it to that next level of which area of accounting do you want to go into? So the first concentration is public accounting. This is primarily for those who wish to pursue the CPA, the certified public accounting um, path. This is, you wanna go into public accounting, you plan to work in the audit or tax profession, um, you plan to sit for the CPA exam. Now, sometimes students aren't sure if this is the path that they want to take. If you're not sure, but there's a possibility that this is the path that you want to take, usually we'd advise you to still do this concentration, mainly because you want to get the, the um, requirements to sit for the exam. Um, each state has a little bit of different requirement. Um, so we can help talk to you about that. Um, and ultimately we would defer you to talk to your state licensure um, board. So each state has its own board of accountancy um, and they can review your transcript and so on, but we can give you some general advice about how our program fits, fits into your goals um, to pursue the CPA. But if that is something that you are definitely sure of or possibly considering, this is, very likely the concentration that we would advise you to pursue. So this would be public accounting. If you plan to go into 
what we call private accounting or corporate accounting, you want to be the accountant for a company. You're going to, you know, your, your goal is to be a controller, CFO type role. These concentrations, the finance, data analytic, or managerial accounting concentration are most likely the concentrations that you want to go into. So the finance concentration is, we put kind of the, um, the certification that you may want to pursue, which is the CMA, Certified Managerial Accounting, which again is more for those going into private accounting. The finance accounting concentration gets heavily into financial analysis. So this is when we're thinking about corporate finance, corporate accounting, it gets into financial modeling, financial decision-making, which is really um, combined with accounting decision-making. Very different than what you would be doing in public accounting. The courses, and I'll show you some of the courses in a moment, they are pulled from our MBA program. So you are getting a flair of what the finance courses in the MBA program are built into our MSA program. So you're getting your core MSA courses, and then you're getting the finance courses from our MBA program. So if you're kind of on the cusp of, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do my MSA or MBA, um, I really want the finance courses from the MBA, but I plan to go into corporate accounting, my background's accounting, I want to be in that controller um, CFO type role, either now or eventually, this would be, you know, the role or the, the concentration I would very likely recommend for you. Um, the data analytic concentration, this one um, has become quite the buzz in the accounting profession. Having this skill set in data analytics is really becoming something that employers are looking for really across the board. Um, I put in here CMA or CPA focus. Um, so if you already have all of your requirements for the CPA, you know, you have an undergrad in accounting, you have your tax, your audit, you may want to take on the data analytics concentration um, to give you that additional focus in data analytics, um, working with big data, how to create, you know, um, statistical modeling in Excel, how to become a little bit more familiar with Python and SQL Server and, um, you know, a little, a little bit of coding, definitely not data science by any means, but um, becoming more um, affluent and acclimated with what a data scientist would do, but you as somebody who should be analyzing the data, and that is something that is being expected that accountants, even coming out of graduate programs, you know, have some familiarity with. We do have um, a data analytics course as part of our core. So all students will get a data analytics course, but this is for the student who really wants to take it to the next level. Um, so this one again is, is very specialized, I would say. Um, maybe you're already coming in with a strong finance background. Um, you already met the public accounting accounting requirements. You know, this is very specialized, I would say, um, to really um, hone in on these data, data analytics skills. And the courses, we are pulling from our applied data science program. So you are getting the best courses that align um, with what we have decided that accountants need in terms of, um, data analytics. So it's a very unique program, um, the applied data science, building it into a data analytic concentration within the MSA program. And then our fourth concentration is the managerial accounting concentration. So this concentration is a specialized concentration in the sense that you create it. You are able to choose from any of the elective courses or the concentration courses from any of our public accounting concentration, finance concentration, data analysis. So you may want to take one of the finance courses 
one of the data analytics courses and maybe just one of the tax courses in our public accounting concentration. You just really want to, um, you know, just get a sense of from each of the concentrations. You may be a student who wants to go into nonprofit accounting and we can work with you together with our um, nonprofit management graduate program and build a concentration from taking courses from nonprofit management. You're still getting the seven core MSA courses, but this allows you to really have this niche focus in nonprofit management. Maybe you're on the fence and you're thinking about leadership and negotiation, and we can work with you individually to, you know, build some courses, you know, from that program, not build, the courses already exist, but choose courses that make sense for you. The point is, we want you, as I mentioned, to come away from this program with a course or with a degree that gives you this traditional MSA program. You're already getting that. And then with these concentrations, it's three courses, but three specialized courses that are for you, that really give you this background into a career industry focus in accounting that is specialized for you in a field in accounting and in an industry in accounting that helps you stand out in that career path that you want to go into. I'll mention one more for the managerial accounting. We have healthcare management. Maybe you know your goal is to work for Bay State Hospital in their accounting department, you know, and you could take courses in our healthcare management. One thing that I think people you know, sometimes think Bay Path University is this small nonprofit university, and we are by design. You know, we want to really get to know our students. You know, we are small by design, but we are, we have these degrees that are so powerful and so career focused, and that we've been able to create them in a way that then we can help design these other programs like the MSA program and pull from these really unique programs to even further um, make programs like the MSA program work for our students um, in a really unique way. So I'm very excited about that and I hope you are too. So here are the courses you can kind of get a sense of, I'm um, sorry that the slide is a little bit small, we have this on our website as well, but you can see the first set of courses are our um, core courses, so there are seven core, I won't go into all the details. Um, then we have three courses in our um, public accounting concentration. We have um, three courses in our data analytics, three courses in our finance concentration, and then we have our managerial accounting concentration where I say specialize your concentration. So this is when you meet with Rashida, um, you know, you can meet with me as well, we can all meet together. Um, this is where we really like to spend the time up front with you to really figure out what makes sense for you um, in the courses beyond the seven core that you're going to take no matter what, um, what makes sense for you. So I will turn it back to Rashida um, with um, the next few slides and then I think we open it up or we, we have some questions, questions. Have yeah. kind of um, plan <laughs> to discuss further. Yes, thank you for that, Dr. Stevens. We are going to talk about a couple of things that are some house housekeeping issues that we need to take care of for you guys so you have all the information you need. One, our learning platform that we are currently using is Canvas. Um, if you have used it before, this will be like riding a bike, coming back into this, the system and working with it. Every new student coming in will get what we call a new student orientation class for our students to get acclimated to the Canvas website. By doing this class, you'll be able to go in and do some work as far as putting a picture up or anything like that, but also you get to see the resources that are provided for you as a student here at Bay Path because we do want you to be successful. We have access to this portal by you doing it on your desktop. You can also do it by your mobile um, apps and devices, and you can also do it by a tablet as well. 
we are very dedicated to our students online. So we have um, tutoring for you guys that you can use if you need help with anything. And even if you want to come to campus, as was stated earlier, you definitely are opened up to that to get tutoring as well. Um, so we support you in all that we do. When it comes to financial aid, we have a graduate financial aid um, department that will help you when it comes to you getting ready for school and coming back. How are you going to pay for it? What am I going to do? No worry. We have you. So what we offer is that we can do phone calls with you. We can also do emails. We also can do in-person and video calls with our students to make sure they're all set up. And you can ask me about that and I'll go through and set you up with the correct financial aid um, advisor to help you. We also have what we call um, a learning session, an information session that we do for all of our students coming in. And that is held every Wednesday, first Wednesday of every month for our students. That is just for the graduate students. We go in, we go over the information that comes along with applying for FAFSA. All of our students are also invited to our FAFSA Fridays. If you're applying and you hit a hiccup in the application, this is where you need to come. This will be an open forum, get those questions asked, and they'll walk through and help you with that as well. Our students that will be going into the program, um, once you apply for your financial aid, we have what we call Stafford loans um, that are through the financial aid um, system is what you will be able to use. Um, and just if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll get it, you connected to the correct people to help you with this as well. When we're looking at it as far as the admissions process and our students coming in, we do prefer for our students to have a 3.0 um, GPA as far as the 4.0 scale. We also need for you to complete a free application online with us and I'll send you that link as well. Um, you'll need to complete a statement of purpose and this statement of purpose just gives us a little insight to who you are and why this degree program is pertinent to you and your goals for your personal goals and your professional goals for yourself. We also um, ask that you send in two recommendation letters um, that will need to pre professional or academic res recommendation letters for yourself in a current resume. So all of this goes over to Dr. Stevens. She loves to read the applications and see all the wonderful stuff that you guys are bringing into the program. So it definitely is a, a easy step to get into the program. And if you have any questions, again, I'm happy to help you um, with any of your admissions questions. Now, this is our contact information if you need anything. And at this point, I'm going to go through and normally ask the typical questions that we do face when we have these information sessions. Um, I guess the first one that comes up would be, how long will it actually physically take if we actually had to complete this program? So this program, depending on whether you want to take one or two classes each session. And this is where I was talking about, it's your choice. Um, usually it would take one year if you were taking two classes per session and there are five sessions, um, or two years if you were taking one class per session. There, there is a slightly more accelerated um, path if you start, and it gets a little bit complicated, but if you start in our spring session two, you could technically complete in um, um, like nine months. Um, but the typical is, you know, the one year or two year um, tracks. All right, thank you for that. Um, typically, how long or how many hours will a student need to apply towards their schoolwork each week? Right, so we typically do tell students to plan on 10 to 15 hours per course. Now, this really depends on the student and the type of learner you are. Some students, you know, 10 hours is really, um, sometimes even not 
they don't even reach the 10 hours. Some students do um, get to the 15 hours. It really depends on the subject matter, the course, um, your background in that area. Um, some students come in, you know, stronger maybe in financial accounting. Um, some students come in stronger in cost accounting. Some students come in stronger, you know, so everybody's coming in at stronger areas. So the average that we say is, is 10 to 15 hours. I never, ever want to hear a student um, going beyond this 15 hours in a week per course. And when that happens, um, and I instruct every faculty to, you know, to say this should never happen and we have to have conversations with the student if they're feeling that way, um, because something is either off in the amount of time that they're spending, you know, they're just spending way more than the expectation is on something, um, or, you know, something's wrong. So um, that is the best, and I'd say through the years, that's been a really appropriate um, average time frame. Um, but again, some students, not as much, but never ever more than the 15 hours per course. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. The next question that comes up is, can I transfer in credits? Yes. So we would, um, you can transfer credits in from other um, um, graduate programs, accredited graduate programs um, that have courses that are similar to ours. Um, you can transfer in typically up to three courses um, is the maximum that we can transfer into the MSA program. So if you've taken um, some type, you know, if you started an MSA program at another school or sometimes we see students have started an MBA program um, at another school, um, yes, we would look at your transcript, um, sometimes ask some questions, sometimes we would need to see, um, you know, the course description just to see how it um, mirrors to ours. Um, the typical rule of thumb is to have a proper transfer. Usually the course needs to be about 70% the same as a course in our program. Um, but the short answer is yes, up to three credits. Um, and then we just need to look at some of the details to make that decision. All right, thank you. Um, another question would be, how available are the faculty um, with being online with our students? Right, that is a question that we get a lot from our students. So we we definitely um, like our faculty to be very available in the sense of not just emails, but also um, through um, Zoom and other online platforms. So I can use my courses as an example. I like to kick the week off with um, usually a live video. So we, our classes are not synchronous. So there's never a time that we require you to sign in live. So we never say you have to be online at five o'clock on Tuesday. That is not a requirement for our graduate program that you have to be online. But what we do and what I do in my classes is I might be online at five o'clock on a Tuesday, let's say live. And if you're available to sign in, I will be live um, maybe doing some type of um, just overview of a topic, um, discussing something, I'll record it, post it, you know, for those students who cannot sign in live. Um, I'll have live office hours at a set time. But what we've found now through the years, understandably, is that we cannot find a time that works for everybody. It's impossible. People have schedules all over the place, right? Everybody is, people are working days, nights, weekends. So what we generally put out there to students is we'll have these live times, right, kind of set, but if they don't work for your schedule, then it becomes up to you to say, hey, I'd still really like to meet with you in kind of this live time. Can we arrange a time to do that? And then that becomes that availability to say, sure, when can you meet? 
Um, so that that's how we really work through that availability. I think, you know, the email, as we know, is in this day and age, you know, this 24 seven type of um, um, availability. I know some faculty, you know, kind of set, um, you know, their their time frames of, you know, maybe um, within uh, the general rule is we like to give a 24 hour turnaround. So if you email, we kind of have a general 24 hour rule that we'll get back to you within. Most faculty get back to you much more quickly than that, but that's kind of the rule of thumb that you'll always hear back within 24 hours. Um, but ideally sooner than that. And then beyond email, that live um, Zoom typically, um, if those live times that we have set up already for the course don't work for you, um, then we say reach out with the time that does. All right, well, I feel that we asked some questions and presented some information for coming out and viewing our video. I hope you enjoyed the information and if you have any things moving forward, please do not hesitate to call or email um, us and we will be happy to